Mark in Geneva, Switzerland. He writes to me and he says, I like to listen at rather good levels. And fortunately, I found speakers which are non-fatiguing. Wilson Audio Sophia's. Great speakers. Uh, I tried once expensive Class D monoblocks and I found that while the sound did not sound fatiguing at first and was very good and very detailed, after listening for two hours, I was exhausted nervously exhausted. I tried this repeatedly with the same results. Whoa! Yeah, there you go. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I tried this repeatedly with the same results, then gave those amps back and bought secondhand priced in monoblocks, which are not fatiguing at all, even though they are not as good and not as revealing. Is it just me? No. Sorry, Mark. It is not just you. But let's not condemn an entire class of amplifiers because many of them have this characteristic. I remember years ago when Class D amps first came out, we made one of the very first ones, the HCA2. And we worked really hard at mitigating that tendency of the amplifier to have that fatiguing quality. And interestingly enough, what we learned is it's not the Class D technology itself. It is the output filter. So a Class D amplifier is pulse width modulated. That means there's a series of pulses, say once every 100,000 times a second, there's a pulse, okay? Just like, kind of like DSD, a single on-off pulse of the same amplitude just like DSD, where DSD is pulse density modulation. This is pulse width modulation. So with pulse density modulation, every period there's a pulse, and that pulse in, in DSD is either on or off. It's either a one or a zero, but it, it's always there. And if, if the music is very soft, then you don't have many pulses that are on, and if it's loud, you have many pulses that are on, okay? And they're so fast and so big that they make this waveform. In a pulse width modulated scene, every single time there is a pulse, it is either exceedingly narrow for a soft sound, or it's very wide and it can only go so wide. And so that if, uh, at, at, as each pulse happens, it gets wider or narrower, so it's on longer or off longer, but always within that same window, okay? So that technology, while it's limited in its dynamic range, where pulse density modulation of DSD is not limited in its dynamic range, not as limited, uh, pulse width modulated is limited, but anyway, it's not so bad because you can certainly get an easy 100 dB out of it, which is more than enough to cover you know anything that you're likely to to want to get to the output filter is very aggressive in a class d amplifier and it's there because of these pulses as you're turning the current on and off on and off you've got to get rid of the transients that are happening at very high frequencies because that's just noise and it turns out that that filter which causes massive phase shift is primarily the culprit behind it. Now, geniuses like Bruno, Bruno Putzi from the, um, God, what, what's he doing now? He's been all over the map. Uh, but anyway, Bruno, Bruno is, Bruno's the man. Br Bruno knows more about Class D amplifiers than any human on the planet, I'm, I'm guessing. And he's done some amazing work with filters that don't really get into it, um, with feedback loops, he, he, guy's amazing. And, and, and not just Bruno, but other people, the, the people at ICE, the Denmark company, the company that we use, those are very non-fatiguing if you do a bunch of right stuff. So what is the right stuff? Well, part of it is how you deal with the input stage. So on ours, we have an amplifier that has a vacuum tube for it's the, uh, the Stellar 1200. I guarantee you, Mark, you take a Stellar 
an M1200 with its vacuum tube input stage and its ICE Class D output stage, and you put it on those Wilsons, you'd be in heaven. Seriously. It's a sweet, totally non-fatiguing amplifier. You can listen to it for hours and hours and hours. That's not the case with many commercial amplifiers that are of the Class D nature. But anyway, that's, so that's a little bit of background on it. Yes, a number of Class D amplifiers unfortunately have that reputation, and deservedly so. But not all. There are plenty out there. Bruno's products sound terrific, never fatiguing. Our products, our Class D products, never fatiguing, ever. And so the technology is just something that you need to be aware of and just be careful because it doesn't have to be that way with Class D. Okay. Thanks for the question. Talk to you later.